Hi, everybody. This is Sit Down. I'm DJ Sixsmith. The Code is a brand new show on CBS. Philip Asu is here with us. Hello. How are you? I'm so good. How are you? It's great to meet you. So I've had a couple of your teammates in here. Yeah. Otto, Luke, Anna. Uh -huh. Everybody loves the experience so far. So you're kind of new to the whole TV film game. So what was this whole experience like for you? It was incredible. I mean, it was definitely like I, I showed up to the first day on set and just thought, OK, just like keep your eyes open and your ears open and watch what other people are doing, like just like learning as we were going. And I feel like having an amazing cast, like just looking at all of us. This is a there, squad I'm right like, here. Dang, it's so <laughs> cool that I get to be on a poster with those guys. But they're all incredibly talented, humble, kind efficient mm. like it's a great set to be on and we we're talking off camera like this shot right here a couple different versions of it this seems to be the money shot it kind of gets you guys all in a good spot I think walking it's confidently so cool and like you know they, they were showing us different versions of what they thought the artwork would look like and like this just like caught my eye and there's something about just walking which feels just so awesome mm. you got that swagger you know we have the swagger <laughs> we're like looking into the future <laughs> like we're badasses it's no, great it's a beautiful shot <laughs> so what has been the most interesting part of the experience for you so far i think oh gosh the most interesting part um without getting into too many details about what happens mm -hmm. i don't want to spoil it right. for people but harper goes on a really um 180 journey um but you know, she, she comes from privilege, she comes from a family who has not served in the Marines, and she's the first one to do it, and they a little bit feel like it's like her going to Europe after college, like hmm. backpacking through Europe. Interesting. Like this is like a phase maybe. Right. And I think that she's coming to terms with the fact that like that's not the case. Hmm. Um, and not only that, like it's much more than that. Like not just to defend like her decision, but to defend the entire Marine Corps. Um, she's put all of her heart into it and she really really wants to do everything right like she wants to be amazing at this job do it with excellence and she wants to win and I think um, coming in with that perspective in a world where things are not always black and white you're not always dealing with right and wrong sometimes you feel at odds with the cases that you're working on so I think she's like sort of like digesting all of that um, and we really see that perspective through Harper's eyes. How do those qualities compare to yours in real life? Well, um, I definitely think I'm a bit of a perfectionist. Okay. Admittedly, like, it's my flaw. Like, I'm, I'm constantly trying to find ways to be, like, okay with, like, letting Just things. accepting things? Yeah, letting like, them roll letting off a little bit? Yeah, letting things be messy, accepting that, like, I did a good job on something or, uh, like, there was a take mm -hmm. that I was, like, you know, I don't know if that was it, but I'm going to trust yeah. that it was right. because I know how to do this job. And then there's times when you can be hard on yourself, where you can ask yourself of more, like ask more of yourself. But then there's moments where it's like that just holds you back, and you don't want to do that. Was it weird for you too? Because like when you're on the stage, you're doing rep after rep, so many different numbers, and then sometimes in a show like this, it's like a one-shot deal, and you're like, wait, I can't go back. Well, I mean, uh, what's great training, like coming from the theater and going into this world, this world. Yes, there's a lot of like you can call cut, mm. you can start over, but then there's there's like the moments where like the elements are against you and you have to get in one shot where it's like, oh God, it's starting to rain or we're losing the light or, um, you know, we only have this actor right. for 20 more minutes. Like we're going to lose, like you got to just go and like throw yourself into it. So I think that's where like the theater world kind of comes into in handy cause, definitely because you gotta like you just gotta like go for it mm. so when people come in here we like to talk about just the age of television that we live in and there's obviously so many platforms but here you are network show still a big audience with networks so what's it like for you to be on a network show in an age where there's so much of Netflix and Hulu and Amazon yeah. stuff like that well I mean I guess what's great about it is there is something really wonderful about like making time to go see something that's going to go ha that's going to happen right like it, like going back to the theater, like you think, well, there's a show and I'm going to go see it on this day and it's on at this time. And I think like that commitment is so great and there's something to the storytelling where you have to really craft it so mm -hmm. that people want to tune in and when they do, they can stay tuned in. And when you're done, they like, they, they, you're like leaving them with something to hold on to for the next episode. <laughs> and at the same time, you want to make sure that people can like jump on at any time. That like if you miss the first episode, you can catch on in the second episode and sort of like fill in the blanks, but then go back and do some research. And 
amazingly enough, now if something is on network TV, you can go back and watch it. Exactly. Later. Yeah. So like, it's great. It's like a nice hybrid of having both of those worlds. Yeah. No question about yeah. it. So why don't we wind it back a little bit? Take me to the early days of your life and, and growing up in this whole world. When did you get the bug for the arts, and when did you start to see <laughs> things develop in your life? Um, I had the bug for the arts at a very early age. I started in ballet class. Mm -hmm. Um, and I feel like one day my mother asked me, well, you know, m parents ask their children, what do you want to be when you grow up? And my response was, a singer or an ice cream taste tester. Ooh, that's and a good one. I don't one. know, like, I don't know what exactly <laughs> I was thinking in my mind, like, what that is, but I, in my mind, I imagine it was, like, to be the first one to try the new flavors right. of ice cream and, like, analyze them. It's like, them. oh, Ben and Jerry's has a new flavor. Let me see what's like, going on I'll here. I'll be the test taster. Like, make sure it's not poisonous. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's what I wanted to be. But, um, yeah, so I, I sort of, like, started in a very um, musical route. I took piano lessons mm -hmm. from a very early age. I took dance. And then acting came in um, sort of like as I became a teenager. I did improv classes at the Pippin Theater mm -hmm. in Chicago and um, realized, and you know, it was an acting class. Right. But as we were acting, I was like, this is what I do like in my yard when I'm like <laughs> playing with my brother <laughs> and my friends. Like just like imagining constantly, like just imagining myself in different worlds, different places as different people. And then ultimately like, going to drama school and then coming out of drama school being like, that is what you want. Mm. That's what you like work so hard to get back to is that like authentic childlike curiosity and Im imagination. So like that's where it started and that's also like where it ended yeah. in terms of like my training. That's really interesting. All that kind of stuff, yeah. And I'm sure you did a lot of playing and imagining at Juilliard. Totally. So, so I've I've heard about the audition stories. Brandon Michael Hall from God Friend of Me, he was Amazing. here. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they kind of take on like an SNL like audition story like of their own. <laughs> so what do you remember about your audition? Um, I remember it was snowing. I was auditioning in Chicago mm -hmm. because they do like, a regional bunch thing? of right. auditions all in one on one place. It's crazy, it's insane. There's like people singing in every <laughs> corner and like dance routines happening and like warming up. It's crazy. Um, but I remember it was snowing that day, and it was my last audition. Um, and I just was like, you know, why not? Yeah, let's do this. Like, let's like dream big here. Hmm. And I had no expectations. Um, and I remember going in and feeling like completely just like taken aback by the generosity and the energy of the, of the people that were there greeting us, of the, what would soon be my faculty. Um, my teachers that were there um, auditioning us. And I just remember being like, if nothing else happens, that was a great day. Mm. Like I got, to, I got to actually work. Like it felt like I was actually learning something by auditioning as opposed to just being like <laughs> terrified. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, it was great. It ended up working out for you. It did, <laughs> it really did. What were some of the cool experiences from Juilliard? Um, one of my favorite shows that I worked on was um, a Fado farce. And I feel like it was the first time that I really got to access, like, I think the musical version of myself, like the musical theater actor, because we'd worked on a lot of Shakespeare, a lot of Chekhov. And um, in this farce, we sort of like had some songs written to sing along with, you know, all the crazy things that were happening. Um, and I essentially just got to like run around and be crazy and wear a blonde <laughs> wig and like <laughs> jump around and like do the splits and um, sing these songs and like being completely free and sort of like that sort of like opened me up into this world of like, uh, which is the complete opposite of what I'm doing on yeah, the road, but definitely. like a world of like clowning and um, comedy and like messiness. Mm. I feel like going back to the, the idea of being a perfectionist. Right. I learned how to be messy. I that was important. To, I learned yeah. how to use my like, I want to keep going into this and like get it. I want to get it. I want to get it. But like that as a rehearsal, like a, a way to like rehearse as opposed to a way to perform, because I feel like you don't want to lose like that spark of like. No, it's natural. It's pure. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So that was like the first time that I sort of like, like unleashed and got into mm. my like wild, crazy self. That's really interesting. So you take that experience and then you go on to Broadway and you have some cool experiences with that. What was the transition like from Juilliard into the real world? Um, I didn't think I would be singing. Hmm. Really? I mean, I, I loved singing, and I love like, and I and I look back like at things that I did, and and like journal entries that I have where I talk about music mm -hmm. a lot. 
but like never really making the connection of like, oh, like I'll do musical theater. Right. I knew I loved storytelling. I knew I loved music. I knew I loved songs and You just didn't put them all together at that point. I guess I just thought that like maybe, I don't know, I, I, maybe I was scared. Hmm. Maybe I was like worried that like that world would not accept me and I wasn't good enough. Hmm. Maybe that's why. When did you realize you were good enough? Oh God. I mean, <laughs> sometimes I'm still like, am I good at this job? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're, you're constantly <laughs> doubting, but when do you realize like, all right, I can hang here at least? When I, when I got my first job actually, um, which was Natasha Pierre and the Great Comet of 1812. That was at Ars Nova, which is like what we call an off off Broadway, because right. it's a smaller house than uh, an off Broadway house, which is smaller than a Broadway house, and um, you know, making not a lot of money a week, no idea what the show could be. I, all I knew is that the, the people that I was with were incredible, and the the artistry and um, the amount of heart and soul that was going into each rehearsal process, like each rehearsal day, I was just like, this is an amazing group of people. Um, and it almost felt like an extension of my schooling experience because we were all very fresh, all very new, and we were coming at it from like, uh, almost like a, like a, like a, if we're like all making like a collective soup, we were all just sort of like, we don't know what this is gonna be, but we're just gonna throw in a little bit of what mm. we got. We're all coming from different walks of, um, you know, walks of life, different artists, not all straight actors, some people who consider themselves more musicians, more singers. Um, you know, and it's and it's at those times where you're like, oh, I can learn something from you, and in turn, I will have something to teach you. Right. Um, so it was great. They're like a family. That show really blew up yeah. from where it first started. I'm so happy. How do you think that happened? I think it happened because it's good. Yeah. I think it happened because you know, here's a story of people who are like seeking like so desperately to like live authentic and true lives under the constraints of their society or their community. Um, and for someone like Natasha, who's like, t like a total like rebel, and I think like this sort of like punk aspect of the show like brings that out. Mm. Like this sort of like angsty like young woman who just wants to like look at the moon and like dream her dream and, and life is so big and so amazing and at the same time it's like so terrifying. Um, those like existential crises that people have like I don't know I think it's great yeah definitely yeah obviously you've talked a lot about Hamilton and the way that it's defined your life and your career what's just like a little moment from that time whether it's a, a life-changing moment or just like a little thing with Lynn Mel Lynn Manuel and the rest yeah. of the group like what do you still kind of remember that's not as much of a big picture thing um I remember oh, just like hours of laughter with me and my two sisters, Renee Goldsberry and Jasmine Cephas Jones, mm. they were my rock. They were an amazing, like, like it was like when we were together, it was like like a force field of like joy and laughter. That's cool. Um, they're so wonderful. They're amazing artists. We're all very different from each other, but we really became sisters, and mostly because like we had to share a dressing room. For the public run. You better get to know each other at that you know, point, we're right? like, so how's it going today? <laughs> like, in two months, our elbows are just, like, right. touching. Right, You know, so it's like, you get close to people. Definitely. Yeah. And how difficult was it for you to move on from that? And, and also, like, not be defined as just being the person from Hamilton. Sure. Well, I have so much to, like, thank Hamilton yeah, for. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's like, it was a huge, it was my first Broadway show. Um, you know, it was uh, one of the hugest things to ever happen on Broadway. And that's your first show. Like and that, that was my first show. Like, yeah. there's like a, it was like a huge, like, I was aware. I was like, this is not normal. Right. But I don't know anything else. <laughs> I'm just going to roll with it. Yeah. 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 And, and, um, you know, I was saying earlier today, like, I forgot that, like, every day, the words that we were saying, the words that we were listening to each other say, like, were inspiring my life. At, like as we were performing every night, like I got to say, look around at how lucky we are, mm. like every day. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, that's nice that I can remind myself <laughs> right. of my job, like that this is not just a job, like mm. it's much more than that. So like there were a lot of like very like, you know, out of body experiences with that show because you're like, oh, yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's like this is my first show. This is now one of the biggest shows of all time. All these people are coming to see it. And oh, by the way, I'm impacting the next generation that's never had this type of thing. <laughs> it's crazy. You know, like you're the first wave of doing that. It's huge. It's huge. And at the same time, the whole point of theater is that 
it's a gift, like mm -hmm. it doesn't belong to you. Right, and you're giving it back to the audience. Yeah, like yeah. you give it away. So like by the end of it, it was sort of like, yeah, like this is a gift <laughs> right. for you. Enjoy like, it. The whole gesture of the night is like this. Right. And so when you come to a point where you have to leave that, you're like sort of unaware of mm. like how big that moment is. Because you're just focused on doing the sure. play. You know, but there were times like in my last show, I think, is this the last time that I'm doing this? That's mm. crazy. But I can't think that. Like, no. It's Eliza's first time doing right. this. <laughs> but now that you have a little separation from it, you can have these thoughts. Yeah. Whereas in the moment, you can't do that or else you'll lose everything going on there. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So when you think about this show, your career going forward, like what are some other goals that you have for yourself? And what do you want people to know about your style if they haven't seen your theater work? Um, gosh, I think um, I've discovered a lot about doing less and being confident that it's enough. Mm -hmm. um, especially in a medium like television, where the scale is so much smaller, smaller in a way, right. but, if you, but if you think about it, is it actually bigger? Because your screen yeah, is like Yeah, it kind of depends. This, and when you like blink, that's a huge gesture. Mm. So in a way, it's almost bigger to me. Right. Because if I'm on stage and I like, you know, I like go like this, that looks like nothing. So it's like, I don't know. I, I love the idea that like they're actually more similar than than different. They really are, and we see so many people transition from one to the other. Yeah. And it makes total sense. Yeah. But now we have an HG screen where it's like that little movement people are going to see. Exactly. Whereas you're on the stage with six other people, maybe people in the first row aren't even seeing that. Exactly. But I, but even so, like what you see and what you don't see, like people feel things. I think that's why they love art. Mm -hmm. I think that's why art exists because we're not just like trying to like learn. We're not just trying to like absorb information. Like we want to feel. We want to put ourselves in these characters' shoes. And I think like the beauty of working with all of these amazing actors is that there's like a connection there. Mm. And it doesn't matter how small the gesture, how large the gesture. It's like true and it's real. And I think that's what people listen to. They listen. They like they tune in right. when they're seeing something like reflected back at them that they see in themselves. Like they want that human connection. So when people learn about the Marines and, and lawyers in the Marines, what do you want them to feel and, and know about that life? Um, I think, I, I mean, honestly, like, if I could share my experience in just trying to put myself into somebody else's shoes, and in this case, a female Marine, mm -hmm. um, like, it's, a, it's like a gift to be able to say, like, I understand you and what you do. I don't do what you do, right. but I can look at you and appreciate what you do and say thank you and also say like I'm standing here with you um, no matter how you feel politically or um, no matter where you come from that like there is a higher purpose in serving your country and I think you know if I could like maybe live another life or go back in time a little bit or if I had a choice to sort of choose a different path. Like, I feel like public service would be an, an, an amazing thing to do. Um, so, you know, maybe in another life. Yeah, I think this, li this life. This life's working out pretty well for you so far. That's true. Philippa, yeah. thanks Thank so much. You. Why don't you tell everybody where they Thank can check so out much. the show? Check out the show Mondays at 9 p.m. on CBS. All right, there you have it. We'll see you next time here on The yeah. Sit Down.